Today I'm sharing the five signs that you're burning fat and not muscle during your weight loss journey. Let's dive into it. My name's Autumn. I'm a certified clinical nutritionist with my master's in nutrition human performance. And today's video is sponsored by Element. More on them in a bit. Now, if you're purely relying just on a traditional scale, it's pretty much impossible to actually tell if you're losing body fat or if you're losing muscle mass. And this really matters if you're looking for long-term sustainable results because most traditional calorie restrictive protocols will result in a significant amount of muscle loss. This muscle loss can then cause a decrease in metabolism as well as a host of other issues for long-term health, like reduced bone density, increased risk of osteoporosis, as well as increased risk of insulin resistance and type two diabetes. But also losing muscle mass just makes us more sensitive to carbohydrates. So it makes gaining weight back so much easier. So instead we wanna make sure the tools that we're using are actually addressing body fat and not causing us to lose muscle mass. This allows us to keep our metabolism high, actually get the benefits of having muscle mass on our body for long-term health and make it so we can maintain our results for the long run. Now, the first sign that you're losing body fat and not muscle mass is that your clothes are fitting differently. Now, you've probably heard the saying that muscle weighs more than fat. And although that's like a little play on words, what it really means is that per volume, muscle is going to be a lot more dense. So five pounds of muscle is going to look a lot smaller than five pounds of fat. That's why you'll often see these photos on Instagram or other platforms where you see these people who look really toned, really fit, but they weigh more than you would have expected. That's because they have lower body fat, but they have a lot higher muscle mass. So when you're losing body fat while maintaining or even slightly increasing muscle mass, it can result in your clothes feeling a lot looser. And this is because we're getting rid of body fat that takes up more physical space, but leaving behind the leaner muscle mass. Especially for women, you might notice this more so in your pants. I know for myself, when I was first starting my postpartum weight loss journey, the first area I really noticed changes were that my pants were fitting differently. I was actually able to wear some pants I wasn't able to wear toward the beginning of my postpartum part and weight loss journey. Now, if you're losing muscle, but not necessarily losing body fat, this could result in the scale going down, looking like you're losing weight, but your clothes don't actually fit any different, or they might even feel tighter. Okay, the second sign is that you're not as hungry. Burning fat as fuel tends to make us less hungry, especially when you're focused on the types of foods that help us to more efficiently burn fat as fuel, which are those that are rich in protein, fat, and fiber. These are the foods that help to boost the satiety hormones, peptide YY and CCK, and just makes it so that we don't feel as hungry. And protein Protein is the most important macronutrient when it comes to actually maintaining muscle mass during a weight loss process. It's really just mandatory to be eating enough protein to actually maintain muscle mass when you're losing weight. And eating enough protein for the body's needs is so satiating, you're just not really hungry. So eating high quality proteins like eggs, Greek yogurt, skier, beef, chicken, pork, tempeh, are great tools for not only helping to keep muscle mass while burning body fat, but also to just not feel hungry during the weight loss process. Now, parents that protein with resi- <laughs> Oh, Sagey. Mm, you just wanna say hi. Now pairing protein with resistance training is the other crucial component to keeping muscle mass while losing body fat. And if you're exercising while also eating high quality sources of protein, fat, and fiber rich foods, it's highly possible that you also need to increase your electrolytes, which is why I love today's sponsor, Element. Element is an amazing zero sugar, high quality electrolyte company that was specifically created with lower carb eating, intermittent fasting, and athletes in mind. It actually contains the sodium, the magnesium, and the potassium to help balance out electrolyte levels. All with Without any sugar, making it a great option for weight loss goal too. I use at least one element every single day, especially during my postpartum weight loss journey where I'm eating high quality, less processed foods and I'm exercising. And on the days that I have element, I feel so much more energized, so much more hydrated and I don't get that mid afternoon crash. Probably my all time favorite flavor is their grapefruit salt, but I like to switch it up. I'll also have their orange salt or their raspberry salt. It just adds a little flavor to my water without having any sugar. So I'm a huge fan. <laughs> And right now, Element is offering my viewers a free sample pack with any order. That's eight single serve packets free with any Element order. It's a really great way to test out all eight flavors. So you can get yours at drinkelement.com forward slash autumn. It's only available through my link. So make sure to check out D-R-I-N-K-L-M-N-T.com forward slash autumn. The link will also be in the description down below. Okay, the third sign that you're burning fat and not muscle is that the measurements are decreasing even if the scale is not. Now, I prefer taking measurements 
rather than just looking at the scale because it actually gives you an idea of what your body composition is. Depending on which form of measurement you're using, it can even tell you specifically how many pounds of body fat you lost or how many pounds of muscle mass you lost or gained. A regular scale can't do that. Now, my personal favorite is using the in body to keep track of my progress. You can often find this at some gyms. Sometimes it's included in the membership. Other times you might have to pay a little fee to use it, but it measures both body fat and muscle mass. And it even tells you specifics about how much muscle mass you have in different parts of your body. So it can compare how much muscle you have in your left arm to your right arm. So if you're also prioritizing your training, you can use this as a tool to help adjust your workouts as well. For example, my lower body tends to be really strong, but my upper body is really imbalanced compared to my lower body. And with the in body, I can actually see specifics on how I'm improving or maybe not improving toward that goal. I like to get these readings done about once every six weeks or so, so I can see how my body's adjusting to the strategies I've used and see if I need to make any further adjustments. Now, if you don't have access to the in body, another option would be the at home scales. Although honestly, these are super inaccurate. So the other method I like to use is taking measurements and you can just do this with like a regular tape measure because body fat does take up more physical space as the measurements start to go down. That's evidence of the body losing body fat. So typically you'll want to measure your hips, your waist, and then maybe for men also around your neck too. Or you could also keep track of your hip to waist ratio. Research is finding that for more ideal health, women generally want to aim for a waist to hip ratio of 0.85 or less. And for men, ideally it's going to be 0.9 or less. So you can just take the measurement of your waist and divide it by your hips to get your waist to hip ratio. Okay, the fourth sign is that you're getting stronger. Assuming that you're actually exercising and using some type of resistance training, which is a necessity to maintain muscle mass during the weight loss process, you should be feeling stronger during your weight loss journey. If you're progressively feeling weaker after every week of workouts, then you're very likely losing muscle mass. If that's the case, it's definitely time to reassess your protein intake, especially to make sure it's actually fitting your body's needs and to make sure that you're getting that protein from high quality complete sources. So if you need a little refresher on that, you can check out my video right up here for the 10 best high quality sources of protein. Okay, the fifth sign is that you start to notice muscle definition. Maybe you start to notice that your quad muscles are peaking out or that you're starting to see your abs a little bit. If that's the case, all of these are signs that your body's actually losing body fat, which helps you show muscle definition because muscle definition and toning is really only going to start to become obvious as we decrease body fat percentage. Although you can definitely be losing body fat and not noticing muscle mass quite yet, but if you do start to notice muscle definition, then that is one way to determine that you're actually burning body fat. This is where taking periodic progress pictures can be helpful for actually seeing this progress, which I did this for myself as well, because it's hard to notice those changes day after day, but actually seeing pictures of your progress can really help to see those changes. Now, actually seeing body fat loss results while not losing muscle does require eating enough protein and using resistance training. So if you're curious on how you can actually fit in enough protein to see those results, you can check out what I eat a day with this video next. Also, if you're new to my channel and you love this science-backed information, make sure you subscribe right here. Come out new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. All right, guys, thanks so much for tuning in and I'll see you in my next video.